One, roll red, take red. Coming up next, social ready distancing two, turned third. into social gatherings this past football weekend, ready to as police are now investigating giant apartment parties in State College. Plus, how a childhood friend's story helped one woman create new opportunities for those in prison. And we remember the accomplishments of a Penn State sports legend, a leader on and off the court. The Center County Report starts now. Roll open. Good afternoon. I'm Hunter Pitcock. Thanks for joining us for the Center County Report. Take one. And I'm Emily Kyler. Cut it. Our top story. Ready State blue. College and Penn State Police will be on alert this weekend. With a Roll big football game tomorrow, they're worried about a repeat of last weekend's party problems downtown. Caitlin Frollo has the story. Take blue. As Penn State played Indiana, the party crowd right, came sweet. out last weekend. Start, Hundreds of people, many of them students, gathered in downtown State College apartment complexes, right. including the Rise, the Here, and Penn Tower. In violation of local COVID ordinance, video quickly hit social media. John Arbach was one of the first to post videos from the atrium of the Rise. Just people in general have the right to know what's going on in their community, especially if it has some kind of effect on them. The large gatherings prompted concern among many in the community. The Rise emailed its residents that all amenities will be closed this weekend, and Penn Tower has since closed its upper deck until further notice. Penn State has reported nearly 3,800 COVID cases among students since August. To put things into perspective, I'm standing right across the street from the Rise apartment complex in Eastview Terrace, which is where Penn State students with COVID-19 are currently isolating. State College Police and the University are now working to identify people at the gatherings through social media and surveillance video. Those identified may be cited and referred to the Office of Student Conduct for other sanctions. Penn State President Eric Barron called the gatherings reckless and irresponsible while encouraging residents of the buildings to be tested. We asked the borough's assistant manager why police didn't cite people at the scene rather than having to rely on later video identifications. He told us safety not citations, is the priority. This past weekend, if you want to call it a quote-unquote test run, we failed. It's not about, you know, getting fine revenue or writing citations and yelling at students. No, it's about limiting those social gatherings, limiting that, that, that close contact. The borough's latest numbers, which include last weekend, showed 17 emergency ordinance violations reported to police and six citations issued. In State College, 31. I'm Caitlin Frollo for the Center County Report. Take one. The borough currently has 32. no plans to change the ordinance in place. Take two. Tomorrow's Penn State game against Pretty Ohio red. State will normally be the whiteout game with tens of thousands of fans pouring into town. But it'll look a lot different this Roll time. Roll red. Take red. Penn State's annual whiteout game is considered Which. one of the best atmospheres in college sports. But the sea of white spread across Beaver Stadium will be non-existent tomorrow. Only the teams, coaches, Players, families, and select media members will be allowed inside the stadium as the Nittany Lions host Ohio State. You won't see fans lined up outside Beaver Stadium on Saturday, but the university is encouraging the Penn State community to still cheer the team on virtually and keep the whiteout tradition going. Penn State Athletics Marketing Director P.J. Mullen says there will be artificial crowd noise playing through the speakers and videos of fans cheering on the team on the big board in hopes of recreating some of the energy. It, it certainly won't be... Uh, Beaver Stadium. You're not going to hit, you know, all the five senses that you typically get when you're at Beaver Stadium, but you'll certainly uh, feel it a little bit and hear it at the very least. Police will be keeping an eye outside to make sure no one gathers around the stadium. Tailgating is not allowed. There will be three official outdoor watch parties for students on campus. Others will try to find a spot at downtown bars and restaurants. But for most people, it won't be the same. During the week, you can always kind of feel the anticipation and this year, I guess, not being able to go, um, it, it just doesn't feel quite the same. Take two. ESPN's College Game Day is also in third. State College for the fourth straight year. The show will air inside Beaver Stadium, away from fans. Take one. We have some breaking news right now. Pretty blue. Today, new COVID numbers are expected any moment for Center County. The total as of yesterday was 4,184 cases here since March. The total number of deaths in Center County remains at 16. Roll blue, big blue. After a recent rise in COVID-19 hospitalizations in Center County, free yeah, COVID testing has though. returned to the Nittany Mall. 
That's where the state set up a drive through testing site earlier this month. Now it's open again, this time inside the former Bonton store. The site has been open since Tuesday and is May scheduled to run graphic. until November 14th. Take two. It's just four days away. In the presidential race, it's been more than 550 days since Joe Biden announced his campaign in April 2019. And the race for the White House has been a leading news story well before then. It's been a long stretch. In fact, too much for many people. Reporter Joe Skinner looks Go at red. election exhaustion. Take red. If you're tired of all the political ads and are starting to tune out, you're not alone. Dude, Myself, so my family, most Chris, of my friends are watching package. television. We you can change always the anticipate or opening it their mic. When, when Let's a check on here. Campaign is coming up in the prompter, like, and you can open it a little early. Again. With the presidential election only four days away, a year and a half's worth of campaigning will finally come to an when end on Tuesday. Switching back and forth Ads, between debates, anchors, then it's a speeches, and photo ops. It gets Here in battleground state Pennsylvania, it's almost impossible to turn on the TV and avoid the negative ads. Penn State student Mike Walro says he wants to keep the spotlight on the issues, but it can start to get exhausting. When you talk about politics for so long all the time, I think people just kind of get tired of it. And it's a shame because, like, voting is a very important civic duty. According to a Pew Research study before the 2016 presidential election, nearly 6 in 10 people said constant election coverage wore them out. Many said too much attention was on candidates' comments and personal lives and not enough on the issues. Despite the frustration, voter turnout has increased in each presidential and midterm election since 2012 and is expected to surpass the 2016 total again on Tuesday. Clark says even though the ads can be annoying, the important result is getting people out to vote. I do like the push for voting and how easy um, corporations uh, have made it for, for their employees or for their customers to find resources to register. Right, I'm two. Joe Skinner for the Center County Report. Take two. The polls will be open on 31. Tuesday from 7 a.m. till 8 p.m. We'll bring you live election coverage on TV and our social media channels that night. Take one. It's been cold ready and blue. rainy this week, but sunnier skies might be in store as we get ready to flip the calendar to November. Salix will have the seven-day forecast coming up. Take also blue. ahead, a Penn State sports legend ready has red. died. We take a look at his lasting impact on and off the court. More after this break. Roll red. Take red. Three, two, one. Roll reopen. For people in prison, getting an education is difficult, if not impossible. But a Penn State professor is trying to change that and make a positive difference. Ariel Simpson tells you about the Prison Journalism Roll Project. Blue. Take blue. A college education isn't cheap. Penn State students and their families spend tens of thousands of dollars to get a <laughs> diploma and a top-notch education. For many others, education itself seems out of reach for many reasons, from personal obstacles to poverty, to prison. At prison similar to what the one behind me, uh, a proper There's education a is hard to come on. by. Uh, there are about 2.3 million geez. people incarcerated in the uh, United I'm States. Sure that, That's about the size of the population of Baltimore. And 41% like of these incarcerated people do not hold a high school it's diploma. Like Those numbers are what it's led Shaheen Pasha to make a positive package. impact. <laughs> that and something she experienced mm -hmm. herself. It wasn't until yeah, but I mean, I saw um, Hunter friend, in preview. Friend, um, was, I, I don't know what happened. You know, arrested and incarcerated. Whenever we saw the, the Jesse Arnold. The Penn State professor says that's when it hit her. It kind of showed me this whole other world that I didn't know, and it really. I'd have to go back and look personal to me. The she launched the self-funded prison short. journalism there might not project be any to black focus on teaching the journalism to inmates. And it's now grown even through the pandemic, now reaching more than 100 writers in 28 states. When the pandemic hit, we realized no, that we were all isolated. Oh, yeah, that's probably what it was. And inside were completely forgotten. It's fine. So we launched this publication just very ad hoc on Medium. And the word got out. We partnered with a few different organizations. And next thing I know, we were flooded with material. Prisoners must handwrite letters and send them to a virtual post office box. Volunteers receive scans and later publish them to the website. Former inmate Christopher Etienne served five-plus years in prison where he earned his GED, then entered Columbia University's documentary program. He continues to contribute to the prison journalism project with more dynamic clips. Lock in as you're locked out of existence, locked out of society, and locked out of social consciousness. He realizes no matter what, an inmate's past may follow them forever. When I sat down, I looked at 
where my life was taking me, I realized at the end of the day, I'm probably always going to be considered an ex-con. But Etienne believes the project will help inmates to learn and also make sure they're not a forgotten piece of society. Given if you guys see any raindrops show up on um, the lens before you come to us, let me know so I can wipe them off. Or we'll just do, like, put their feelings right and emotions out How bad there. is it raining? You may empathize. Um, it's getting a little heavier a than a drizzle. As a person. Josh Asha hopes to use an umbrella, more people but we'll will learn about the prison journalism project so it can continue to expand nationwide. I'm Ariel Simpson for the Center County Report. Take two. Right now, the Prison Ready Journalism one. Project is working on textbooks and a best of 2020 book for inmates. Take one. Penn State has Ready lost red. a sports legend. Former two-sport athlete Jesse Arnell passed away last week at the age of 86. Christopher Hess has more Roll on red. Arnell's legacy. Take red. Trailblazer, humanitarian, student, nice. and athlete. Those are just some of the adjectives to describe Jesse Arnell. Can Last Wednesday, Arnell passed away at the age of 86. Eh. As a 1955 graduate of Penn like State with a degree in political science, Arnell excelled like on the football field, on the basketball court, and in the classroom. Mm. Yeah. He was a defensive end on Rip well, Angel's um, teams of the 1950s. But has it's getting real. It's getting harder. I might have to whip out the umbrella. He went on to become Penn State okay. basketball and Josh might look like, like Mary Poppins. Fuck, if you use the umbrella, I can't do the game thing. No, no, no. We're not using the umbrella. No. He can Penn State sports historian Lou Prado says Arnell's abilities on the okay. court show what kind of leader and he was. And I'll give you cues for whenever to, uh, things are happening in that block. the captain of the team and All-American honors. The only Penn State player ever went first team All-American. Though Arnell's athletic talents were great, his off-the-field accomplishments were revolutionary. Arnell was the first African-American to hold the title of student body president as well as the first African-American member and chair of the board of trustees. He was also a Navy veteran and a lawyer. A number of scholarships in his and his wife's name are also awarded to students in the colleges of the liberal arts, health and human development, and the Dickinson School of Law. Prado says Arnell's athletic and scholastic achievements have put him into an elite category of Penn State figures. Jesse Arnell will be remembered as one of the great Penn State athletes and students and, po and graduates, alumni in Penn State's history. In State College, right, I'm one. Christopher Hess for the Center County Report. Take one. A more formal and traditional ceremony third. to celebrate Ready Arnell's to life open. will be held later after COVID-19 subsides. Roll weather open. Good afternoon, I'm Sally Tyverson here with your Friday afternoon her. forecast. Looking out at Beaver Stadium, a very go. overcast sky right now, and maybe even All a couple right. of drops of rain. Currently feeling like 43 and degrees then, with a uh, north wind at 6 miles weather, per hour. The Temperatures across the rest of the central portion of Pennsylvania showing pretty much sticking in the mid to upper 40s for us here in central PA. Looking across the rest of the state, that seems to be the trend as oh, well, with time? temperatures <laughs> sitting right around that 40 degree mark. If we want to look at our current radar and satellite, like I had mentioned, there are a couple of raindrops um, moving over the State College area, maybe even some snow flurries, flurries right around that northern tier of Pennsylvania. Looking at our future cast, we'll see that they, we may get even some more drops of rain right around that dinner time hour, but the clouds and the rain will clear out as we head into the overnight hours tonight and into tomorrow. So as you wake up for tomorrow, Halloween and game day, a very clear sky throughout much of Pennsylvania. Looking ahead through towards the rest of the day, again, the sun will remain in the sky for the rest of the evening uh, or for the day, and then a clear sky well into the evening right around kickoff. Some clouds will move in Sunday during the uh, morning hours and overnight, and then this will be our next chance for some rain as it makes its way east, impacting us on Sunday. Now your forecast for today, 46, overcast with some showers, and tonight a very chilly night, 26 degrees and partly cloudy, so we're about 10 degrees below average. Looking at our whiteout forecast, sunny tomorrow yeah, and remaining clear as we head into the kickoff. 44 at 5 p.m., 40 at 7.30, and cooling down to 37 by 10 p.m. Looking right. at our seven-day forecast, one. again, some sun tomorrow before the showers return on Shower Sunday. 15. And then heading towards the rest of next week. It won't be like this week. It will actually pre be pretty sunny as we head into the rest of next week. And now we'll bring it over to David in sports. Take one. Thanks, Alex. Penn State has Pretty its blue. home opener tomorrow, but how will it be for the Nittany Lions playing with no fans and without Noah Kane? We'll preview the game next. Blue. 
Also coming up, how are new head coaches adjusting to a new job in the middle of a pandemic? That's next after this break. Right, ready, red. Roll red. Three, two, one. Roll sport open. Sports open starting from pitching umbrella. I'm David Hadar right, with Sports. Ready, talk show. Penn State suffered its first opening season I'm loss since 2015, open. dropping a heartbreaker at Indiana last week. The Nittany Lions look to avoid the same fate tomorrow when they host Ohio State. Roll live open. Josh Starr is live at Beaver Stadium with more on the big game. Josh? Josh, you're live. Thanks, David. I'm outside Beaver Stadium where number 18 Penn State will kick off against number three Ohio State right, tomorrow. Yeah. Now, last week, Penn State was plagued by mistakes and penalties that won't play this week against Ohio State. Now, Penn State will have to come home with an 0-1 record, more missing pieces, and have to face off against one of the country's best teams. All right, roll, roll blue. Take blue. Penn State will be without another important nice. piece in oh, its yeah. backfield tomorrow against Ohio State. Running back Noah Kane left the week one loss at Indiana with an injury and will be out for the remainder of the season. That leaves sophomore Devin Ford, who will get the bulk of the carries, and freshman Kevon Lee and Keziah Holmes in the backfield. Uh, Even without Journey Brown and Noah Kane, Coach James Franklin well, says last week's loss didn't have to do with missing pieces. Next, we, we played hard. From right, there. We, right, we played okay. with passion. We just we didn't always play Got smart. It. We'll obviously learn. Uh, from some of the mistakes that we made in, in week one, and we're going to have to. Starting linebacker Jesse Lucchetta will also be sidelined for the first half after he was called for targeting against Indiana. Franklin said the team will feel that loss against the Buckeyes offense that scored 52 points last week against Nebraska. To beat this type of team, it's not going to be pieces. It's, it's going to be a hole. One of Penn State's biggest preseason strengths, its running backs, is now down to three players with a combined 83 career carries. Getting them going will be key for Penn State in its first home game without fans. Ohio State coach Ryan Day says the whiteout normally makes it hard to communicate, but the atmosphere will be different this year. Penn State is one of two teams in the Big Ten East to beat Ohio State since 2014. But that win came in a Beaver Stadium full of fans not cardboard. Josh, you're live. Take talk show. College game day is here for one of the best college football matchups this week in the nation. Now, for Penn State to win that matchup, it's going to be key to take care of the football. Last week right, with three one. turnovers in Indiana, Sean Clifford will have to try to take more care of that football. You can catch the game on Penn State's Com Radio with kickoff at 7.30. I'm Josh Starr for the Center County Report, live from Beaver Stadium. Back to David in the studio. Take one. Thanks, Josh. Today I had a chance to talk with right, Tom Chris Rinaldi from blue. ESPN's College Game blue. Day about coming back to Penn State and the message he hopes to send fans in his heartwarming feature stories. Blue. They Take get blue. a sense of the journey of nice a job. player well beyond just the performance on the field. Uh, when you watch the Nittany Lions play, you can see the excellence this? at so many positions. You can see the uh, future NFL stars and, and how they represent the fan still base needs and that delivering graphic victories or if he starts talking about high school right out of this. and trying to reach the college football playoff. So All I can change things. it? Yes. But each and every one of those players has walked his own incredible path typically to get there. And the opportunity to try to tap into that, not only to show people what that path has how been. How long is this, Steve? But to tap in, David, to the aspiration of where that player also is striving to go in representing his team, playing for his brothers, playing for his school, and then hoping that he might be able to play on Sundays and help his family in that situation. That aspiration has great energy, and it's, it's got great inspiration around it. What do you think their chances are of, uh, of pulling off an upset tomorrow, similar to how they did in 2016? To take nothing away from Indiana and the incredible, incredible play, which will now be indelible, at least in this season, of stretching out and touching the pylon, whether it did or did not break the plane with the point of the ball. But Penn State dominated the game in every metric uh, until its very conclusion. So with that, Knowing that, yes, there's the disappointment of loss, but now there's the great blessing of opportunity right away 
to have the chance to play the team everyone regards as the standard bearer, not just in the division of the conference, but in the conference overall. And think about what a win would mean. Not only would it absolutely flush away the memory of that week one loss. Do we know what the out but is? But now suddenly, yeah, I got yeah, it. with the uncertainty it. of oh, here it is. not knowing seconds. how many games are going to be played, David, Ready, one. how many games might be canceled, the, the meaning of this win can't be overstated if Penn State is able to achieve it. Take one. High school football playoffs are here, and several local teams are going Ready, up red. against some formidable opponents. Here are tonight's matchups. Roll red. State Take High red. already lost to Harrisburg on Monday, so they won't Can be playing on Friday. But 3 and 3 Belfont will take on 4 and 1 Juniata. After losing to Belfont last week, Phillipsburg Osceola will square off against non-conference opponent Northern Cambria. And tomorrow, undefeated Tyrone plays Ready, undefeated one. Central as a playoff game in Mansion Park Stadium in Altoona. Take one. While sports continue Ready, despite blue. COVID-19, the journey here has been different. Reporter Ariel Simpson looks at the adjustments newly hired coaches needed to make this year. Take blue. The state high field hockey team is one of many fall sports making its return to play in the presence of COVID-19. The team was without a head coach for six DJ, months before Sharon Herlocker stepped in to take over in May. Uh, Herlocker he has previous coaching experience, but leading a new program in the wake of a pandemic has brought new challenges. We've been going step by step since since July. In July, they allowed us to do a modified summer trade, optional summer training, and then slowly we've gotten more and more freedom, so to speak. Whether you're coaching yeah, on the field hockey field or at the ballpark, newly hired coaches, no matter what sport or what level, have been thrown in the new challenge of coaching a new program, all while during a pandemic. I don't know if anybody was really prepared to, to coach during a pandemic um, or we're, I don't think any of us are prepared for anything that it brings but but honestly I, I do think my um, experience has has helped me just in general. Crowell brings 18 years of coaching experience to Penn State but has never had a season like this one. I think the connectedness piece has really been what we've what we've missed that in-person connection I would say that that has been the biggest challenge. While the pandemic may have put new obstacles in their paths, both Crowell and Herlocker welcome these new challenges. Roadblocks happen in life, so it just happens to be happening right now. With Penn State softball set to restart in the all spring right, and state high field hockey already underway, all that these coaches can do is roll with the changes. In State College, I'm Ariel Simpson for the Center County Report. Take one. Week 8 of the Ready, NFL red. season features both the Steelers and Eagles Roll playing red. in divisional matchups. Take red. Pittsburgh makes the trip to AFC North rival Baltimore for the team's first meeting of the season. The Steelers are the lone undefeated team, while the Ravens sit just a game back at 5-1. Just up by 95, the Eagles host the Cowboys in prime time on Sunday Night Football. Philadelphia is in first place in the NFC East with a 2-4-1 record and looks to stave off a struggling Dallas squad. Mike McCarthy's team could be on its third string quarterback, and the defense has given Ready up the one. most points in the league this season. Take one. That's all Ready for two. sports. Now back to you at the anchor desk. Take two. Ready, blue. Coming up next. Roll blue. It's me, Mario, Take or at blue. least someone dressed like him. This man is turning downtown State College into Ready Rainbow red. Road. Find out why after the break. Roll red. Take one. Remember Nintendo's Mario Kart? Well, Ready, nearly blue. 30 years after its initial release, one man is bringing the game to life in State Roll College. Blue. Joshua Take Schaefer blue. is from Chicago and has been driving all around Ready, the country since buying his go-kart in June. With his Mario costume, speakers playing Mario Kart music, and free rides he gives to people who ask, Roll he's red. gone viral. Take red. You know, people kept saying it looked like a Mario Kart, and that gave me the idea to just buy the shirt, the hat, play the music, and throw a doll on the front. I've been on like several TV news stations. I've been to a couple children's hospitals. Like I just been spreading love Take everywhere I go. Take one. Just wants to make people Ready two smile. with lower third. Take two. And that's all for today's newscast. You, you can find more of our stories on our website, centercountyreport.com. Our next newscast is on Tuesday, but you can follow us anytime for breaking news. That's on Twitter, at Center County R.E.P. Or on our Facebook page, 
We also have a Center County Report Check Instagram. It. Have a good weekend. Get ready to fade. Oh wait, so it's not the live shot? Okay, black. Go to black. Okay.